Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Fresh off the Atlantic City leg of the 2022 outdoor boat and fishing show circuit and back at my desk this week. I know, I know, I'll be back on the road in the coming weeks doing our weekly video forecast from a couple of tackle shops and bulkheads, maybe some boats, and of course those sedges and sod banks as well, soon enough. Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, March 10th, and the first full week of striped bass fishing in 2022 here in New Jersey, in one word, spectacular. Those are the reports we're getting. First, I know we have a lot of New England pro staffers tuning in each week. What's up, guys? How's it going? But as a reminder, here in New Jersey, the first part of the year, January and February, is off limits in those back bays, in those rivers, to even targeting striped bass. So January and February, we don't get to target striped bass on catch and release as some of the northern states do. Um, but the Bay and Rivers are open as of Mon uh, Tuesday, March 1st. So that is great news. And as we've quickly learned in the past nine days, well, these back bays and rivers are absolutely loaded with striped bass. And that is a great sign. Stripers of various sizes as well. Uh, seemingly that wintered over in some of those deeper areas, the rivers and back bays. Bloodworms have been key in most of these areas, of course, as they come up from the cold depths. They're still a little bit lazy. They come up on the muddy flats along the rivers. Think Great Egg Harbor, Mullica, Raritan. That's where they're going to come up and get some baits. However, that's not to say you can't jump a few fish, uh, more than a few fish, really, from the reports we're getting, on soft plastics and some of those smaller plugs, uh, particularly the uh, twitching Rapala X-Rap size 10s, getting them done. So let's, let's run down our striped bass action and winter flounder as well. Starting along the northern stretch, where I understand those rivers are chock full of winter over stripers already chasing baits, chasing plugs. Think areas of the Hackensack and the Passaic. John Canosa has been, been fishing way up yonder in whereabouts unknown, and he's been excited about the action already. This is what happened in the river late winter, early spring. Striped bass time, baby, New Jersey. Gotta love it, baby, gotta love it. Get on out there, guys. While American angler Carl Hartman was on the urban assault over the weekend, releasing this 36-inch striped bass that he estimated at 20 pounds. Yes, there are some fine, high-quality, or higher-quality stripers in the mix, and that's only get, get, going to get better. These aren't cows, of course, but 20 pounds, we're starting to get into some good-sized fish, and pretty soon, before you know it, we are going to have those migratory stripers, whether they're migratory, migrating from deep in the raritan, off the beaches, out beyond three miles, or coming up from the south. Who knows? I did speak to Phil at the Tackle Box earlier this week uh, for our fishing reports over at thefisherman.com. He said guys were crushing bass on the rare and Monday morning. Beautiful weather. Guys were, uh, uh, were just having a blast. Phil said these fish were coming downriver from their winter over spots in the upper stretches of the Raritan. And he said that the tsunamis and the NLBNs were getting the job done. Warmer weather on Monday, of course, uh, would hopefully bode well for this entire week, although temperatures dropped a little bit. Wednesday's weather was pretty icky. But Phil told me Sunday morning he had registered uh, water temperatures at the Keensburg floodgates of about 39 degrees, but by Sunday afternoon it was up to 47. And our long-range forecast heading into next week looks like a nice warming trend ahead of us. So I would expect that things are really uh, getting ready to blow wide open. Uh, in years past, we're starting to get the first signs of those big fish on the Raritan. The first reported catches in the first week in April. I wouldn't doubt that the last week in March is when those fish usually arrive for the folks with tight lips. So we're just about a week or two away, seriously, uh, of some really good striper fishing. Now getting down into Shark River, Tom at Fisherman's Den said there are a few winter flounder being caught in the Shark River. He said the first couple of days after March 1st last week were slow. Uh, some folks had asked if we had any winter flounder reports last week. Most folks were really gunning for the stripers. 
Uh, but Tom did tell me earlier this week that by the weekend, guys were getting into those rental boats there at Fisherman's Den and sneaking out all over the river uh, when they're out there prospecting a little bit, finding better action with those winter flounder. In the Manasquan area, I spoke to Jason at Fisherman's Supply on Monday about the same thing. Um, he said the winter flounder guys have found some success in the good, good Luck Point area. That's not a spot burn because keep in mind, the more the merrier when it comes to a chum slick out there winter flounder. Of course, if you get the slick over, you get the fish near you, it's going to tick somebody off. But the more chum that's out there, the more opportunity to get those winter flounder congregating in one particular uh, uh, stretch, right? Uh, on the striper front, Jason used the word explosive to talk about striped bass in the past week. He said any white paddle tail, soft plastic, or shallow running plug like the Yazori Fingerling or a small SP Minnow would work in terms of finding a productive area. He kind of indicated that the whole Barnegat Bay region is stacked with striped bass, but he said, uh, try some random neighborhood street ends. He called Google Earth your best friend, and by all accounts, the upper stretches of Barnegat Bay are loaded with stripers, and yes, need I say it, the Toms as well. Now in that stretch from, let's say, the 37 bridge down to Barnegat, winter flounder and striped bass. Still the same thing. Uh, the crew from Grumpy said bloods are getting both out back, but again, some of those smaller shads and twitch baits in the back stretches along the Barnegat Bay will get you into some of the stripers. In Southern Ocean County, Burlington, Upper Atlantic, you can't go wrong with the Mullica River area. Uh, if those bass are stacked up in the Toms and the Raritan, you can expect to find the same thing in the Mullica. Now, as it warms up a bit, and those fish drop out of the deeper stretches up the Mullica, uh, they all, often have, when you first start catching them, the more bronze or gold appearance because they've been in that, uh, that brackish water all winter. But then at some point in the next week, two weeks, three at the most, we're going to start seeing some of those ocean run fish turn in. They're the fish that are going to have some sea lice and they'll be more of a silvery appearance. But again, we're about a week or two before things really blow up along those sod banks. So you can look for fish along stretches of the Great Egg as well. I spoke to some good folks at the Atlantic City Boat Show last week who were looking for uh, general spots along the uh, Tuckahoe. Uh, but again, all I can best really say without burning somebody's really good spot where parking is always a problem. As Jason said before, Google Earth is your friend. So if I'm talking about some of these spots on the Great Egg uh, or the Tuckahoe as a potential, uh, you really need to hunt and pack. So you might want to use Google Earth to find some uh, street ends some dirt roads or something like that. But again, uh, the, the Great Egg Harbor River, that happens to be the place in April, many years ago, where the largest freshwater striper on record was caught. I believe it was 48 pounds. That was a saltwater fish. Keep in mind that striped bass are anadromous. They swim in both salt and fresh. They return to freshwater, those big fish, to spawn. So as those big stripers start to migrate up the, uh, the Great Egg, well, let's say, let's put it this way. We know with the first ospreys are already around and the first herring gulls, once the herring start moving up, the big girls can't be far behind. By the way, that's talking about some swim baits, right? But in our regular effort to try to find the best bait holder circle hooks for you guys throwing bloodworms or potentially clams, because I see some shops uh, David Absecan Bay Sportsman, as a matter of fact, has surf clams. Um, but you need to be using those inline circle hooks. Bait holders. The Jigging World Z, bait, Z Blade inline bait holder circle hooks. Let me try that again. That's a mouthful, right? Jigging World's Z Blade inline bait holder circle hooks. They're available now at Tackle World up there in North Jersey. But I, I spoke to Michael Kim on Wednesday. He said he's out and about trying to get some of those Jigging World Z blades out to shops at the Jersey Shore. So take a look, look out for the Z blade series bait holder circles out on the market. Uh, just like I said, be on the lookout because that's in addition to the only other ones that I know of right now. Those are the Eagle Claw laser sharp bait holder style circle hooks. But those big bloods, for example, that you're going to get out there at Bucktails Outfitters in Maze Landing, they need to be um, what you use. Uh, you, you need to put those big blood worms on an inline circle hook, so you look for those bait holders. But the bulkhead in town there, uh, that's uh, very well known at this point. But the crew at Bucktail said other locations along that stretch are also producing. With Douglas here, uh, he's showing an opening season fish stuck in the reeds someplace 
there around the Mays Landing area, Great Egg Harbor River. Heading into Cape May County, plenty of sod banks and sedges to give it a go. Yes, the Tuckahoe down, but my guess is the back bays, um, particularly under any of those bridge structures leading across into Cape May County towns, right? Uh, and especially along some of those warming, sun-drenched uh, mud flats where you might be able to find some early season success. I did hear from Aaron Sims this week. He said he and his buddy Dave were at Reed's Beach over the weekend and got a couple of smalls pretty quickly as they started fishing. Aaron said they also moved over to Fortescue, but the winds really riled things up over the weekend. Uh, and made it difficult. I did talk to the folks at Higby's this week uh, down in Fortescue. They said they had their first reported keeper striper last year happen on March 12th. That's this weekend. So far, there have been mostly smaller fish along that stretch of the Delaware along Fortescue Beach, uh, but we're right on schedule at this point in terms of looking along the Delaware. Speaking of which, you know what else has entered the Delaware other than bunker that we talked about last week? Shad. We are starting to hear about some shad up the Delaware River. I heard from Brian Downs this week. He and his son Aiden uh, got on those shad along the Delaware, someplace between the Salem River Bridge and Dingman's Ferry Bridge. How's that for not a spot burn? Um, pretty evasive. Hopefully we'll see a good shad run on the Delaware uh, uh, coming up this spring, but that's a good sign that, uh, and I thank Aiden Downs for sending that photo along of the first shad that I've seen. And as soon as those shad are arriving, the bunker are there, and we, we talked about the herring, you know it's only a matter of time before those big stripers begin heading up river, the Delaware, to spawn. And that also means it's just about time to break out the majas, the mojos, and of course, the drift spoons. Hey folks, Captain Mark here. Spring is approaching and the Edison New Jersey show is March 18th through the 20th, all right? So come over to the Tony Marshall booth, meet Maja, get coach cheese, Tex. We'll be there on Saturday, probably Sunday morning, all right? What we're gonna be showing off is the new Masha Mojos, Masha Spoons, and new for 2022, the beautiful Masha Drift Spoons. They are deadly. Details on the upcoming striped bass hearings, fluke and sea bass in New Jersey, a recreational reform initiative, and a message from Bob the Garbage Man. But first, let's get a freshwater update with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, beautiful day here at the lake. Things have certainly turned around. I was just talking to one angler here at Beltsville, said water temperature up to 41 degrees. Boats are already out in the lake, and that's just a really good sign that the season is about to begin. Um, you know, I was talking to guys all the way over in the river, uh, Finseeker Guide Service, my friend Tim Keebler. He's out fishing some smallmouth right now in the river and being real successful. I think that bite is on. It's going to be really hot even until we get those shad starting to run up the river. Now also, uh, over in New Jersey, Jen Wong, our good friend there, you know, water, the ice went out, open water opened up, and Jen was on it with strength. He's already in that pre-spawn bass season and being real successful with that as well. Again, the tactic there has been real successful is the jerk bait. So guys, get out, try some jerk baits. They're going to work for you too. Now also, we've had uh, Lori Murphy from Dow's Boat Rental on Lake Hopakong check in, and she reports that um, the, the lake has, <laughs> season has begun and is off to a great start. Uh, you know, Aaron Graybill of Lake Hopakong Guide Service, uh, he reported in saying there's excellent fishing. He was out getting some, uh, some crappies, some yellow perch. Uh, they've been really strong. So these fish are up in the shallow and being real aggressive. So another good thing to try there. Most ultralight baits, she said, are working well. You know, small plastics, small jerk baits, anything the ultralight size is going to produce for you there. Also, Dylan Cole weighed in at two nice crappie, uh, one, point, uh, one pound, nine ounce, and a one 0.7 ounce crappie and that's not bad no matter where you're fishing. I may be taking a trip to New Jersey real soon with fish like that. Also anglers uh, you're going to find uh, anything largemouth bass, white perch, everything's going to be moving up in that shallow water feeding heavy right now so looks like good fishing over there on Lake Hopakong. So guys I best advice I can give you is put those tip-ups away. The open water season is here. From Pennsylvania I'm George your Pocono Outdoors guy. Public hearings on Amendment 7 to the striped bass plan are underway. Now keep in mind, this is not about changing the regulations for 2022. We are all locked stock and barrel. 
uh, complete with the circle hook requirements and our slot fish. But this could, may, possibly impact us in 2023 and beyond. Now, while we're seeing a whole lot of striped bass here in the Garden State already, the bottom line management concept is this. As anglers, we're exceeding our annual mortality target on striped bass through harvest and catch and release mortality. And the only way that fisheries managers say we're going to rebuild that spawning stock biomass is by ratcheting down the effort to get below that threshold. That's what this huge document is all about. A giant document, draft amendments and public comments and charts and triggers. <laughs> you can learn more about what all this means at our upcoming public hearings. March 10th is when Delaware anglers, striper fishermen will meet virtually. New Jersey and Pennsylvania will meet for a combined webinar together on Monday, March 14th. And in New York, they're actually meeting in person on Wednesday, March 16th. But the very real possibility of a future two week closure is there in the book, this giant document. What that two week closure would be is during this the part of the season when we have the most uh, directed trips. So in New Jersey, if they were to close a two week portion, not just to harvest, but to actually targeting striped bass, they would have to close two weeks of the season in March or April, or potentially down into November and December. So these are some of the things that we're looking at. Um, and then you've got these triggers, which are pretty much like trip wires, they're management mechanisms. So when we heard us hit a certain number statistically, that's going to trigger action where fisheries managers have to respond. It's all very complex. The document is long. You can read through some of it. There is a summary at the ASMFC.org website. You can find out all about the meetings, download the entire document there at ASMFC.org. Certainly email me, jhutchinson at thefisherman.com. I've got a couple of summary pieces. Look for the American Sport Fishing Association's document. They just came out with their position and it really breaks down some of the things that they believe may be of help. Can't see eye to eye on everything, but um, it is a good summary and I'll try to get that out to you um, in terms of um, these meetings coming out. But again, email me if you want some more information. As for the start of summer flounder and black sea bass in the Garden State, the next meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, uh, that is tentatively scheduled for April 7th, which, which the 7th of April does not leave us much time at that point for planning, uh, considering the fact that black sea bass is supposed to start on May 15th and fluke to start soon after that on May 22nd. I will keep you posted but state officials are keeping all of us virtually in the dark at this point. New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. God bless you guys. But they're holding another meeting this Saturday, March 12th, another virtual hearing on upcoming stocking efforts for trout. Like everything else, government is virtual in New Jersey. We have a virtual government. <laughs> you can get details on the trout meeting at njfishandwildlife.com. Now, if you're virtually at wit's end, uh, with the state of recreational fisheries management today, there's another virtual hearing for folks next week. Boy, you need a big schedule for this. Uh, something that I wrote back in November called the Recreational Reform Initiative. Um, if you have that November edition of the Fisherman Magazine, go back and look for that article. But you can also go to thefisherman.com and type in the search bar, Initiative for Change, a new call for angler management. I will send an email out about that on Monday or Tuesday of next week so you can refresh yourself before these meetings start. But this recreational harvest control rule, the meetings start on March 16th. It's an effort from some of my friends who are advocating for some type of reasonable change to how we manage our recreational fisheries for fluke, sea bass, and porgies. I know all this stuff that we do. Look, a lot of folks that watch this video forecast, they just want information on where to catch fish, right? Fishing is fun. I fish for sport. I don't need all this nonsense. But some folks really want to know when these things are going to take place. It's a good reason uh, why I tell people you might want to join a fishing club. If you're frustrated by the aspects of fisheries management, go look for a local fishing club to start taking uh, part in some of these discussions because I know guys talk about it all the time. If you want more information on that, pick up that March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It is out on newsstands right now. Uh, if you want to wait another week to get it for free, I'll be out there at the Saltwater Fishing Expo next week. But we've got our news briefs and our calendar events that usually cover items of interest from our local clubs. You can get in touch with one of the clubs that way. Speaking of the shows, Congratulations to Bob Fuller of Manahawkin who stopped by the booth in Atlantic City on Friday, March 4th. 
Bob, your name was drawn at random from hundreds of entries for a Sterling Tackle wide tracker. You'll be getting that in the mail, I believe. Uh, Bob, you too, Carlos. I know you won that one out in Philly. And again, the next chance for you to win one of these spreader bar uh, wide trackers from Sterling next weekend. So for your chance to win a Sterling Tackle wide tracker, come out and see us at the Saltwater Expo next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Finally, a word of warning from Bob, the garbage man, who is apparently gearing up for his 2022 soak season. Well, he attended the Lady of the Sea fishing flea market in Keyport recently. I have no idea what that is. Bob said a man goes by the name of Skinny Daryl, a.k.a. Slim D, a.k.a. Fat Daryl. Apparently sold him some ninja throwing stars that were apparently so dull they couldn't sever a bloodworm. They also began to rust on Bob's first soak of the season. Ninja throwing stars. Didn't know that was going to be a product review on the Fishman. Thanks, Bob. We will keep an eye on, on that. <laughs> we'll keep, out, keep an eye out for Bob, too, fishing somewhere down in Atlantic or Cape May County. Tim Hutcherson saying God bless and may the fish be with you. Remember, as a wise man often says, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Catch him up. I'll see you next week. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.